What kind of sword is this? Did you say scimitar? Wrong! Jokes aside, let's talk about the scimitar problem. Chances are, if you have ever played a video game, if you have ever seen a TV show with a sword like this in it, you have probably heard this sword referred to as a scimitar. The, uh, scimitar. Turks fight with the curved blade of a scimitar. A scimitar. A scimitar. 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 Curved swords. Now, there are two major problems with the word and classification of a sword as a scimitar. First gets talked about a lot, the second one is rarely talked about. The first problem is with the word scimitar itself. Now, the reason that you might call this sword a scimitar is because in history, some people would have called this sword a scimitar. However, the proper name for this sword right here is a shamshir. It is a Persian sword, and the Persian word for this sword is shamshir. The word scimitar comes from the Italian word scimitara. The word scimitar or scimitara was the European term for essentially any eastern curved blade. So that includes things like the shamshir, but it also includes other weapons such as killages, such as talwars or pulwars. Now, why is that term a problem? Well, because it treats this sword and many other swords that are different from this sword in Northern Africa, the Middle East, the Indian subcontinent, and parts of Asia as all being the same sword. It lumps them all into the same category and says these things are the same. When in fact, there are distinct differences in these swords. That would sort of be like calling this sword a katana. Now, you'd be forgiven for calling this sword a katana. It sort of looks like a katana, but it's not a katana. It's actually Chinese. It's a type of Dao. So the word scimitar is somewhat problematic because it treats a lot of these weapons as being similar or the same when in fact they're just not the same weapons. It's more precise to call this by its actual name. So scimitar is a historical term, it's just somewhat of a misguided one. Now this, in my opinion, is actually the bigger issue with scimitars in media. Remember this scene from Indiana Jones? This man is holding what most commonly is depicted as the fantasy scimitar. It is a curved blade that sort of has this swell at the end of it. And this sword is called a scimitar everywhere in fantasy. It's in Skyrim. It's in Elden Ring. It's all over the place. As I've stated, there were plenty of eastern curved blades that were historically called scimitar, even if that term is misguided. This sword isn't one of them. The closest thing in history that this sword resembles is a European sword. It's a falchion. The two closest eastern blades that we have that sort of resemble this are a dao or a killage. A dao has somewhat of a similar shape. We have this very broad blade that has the swell and this sort of flat portion on the back end. The problem is, is that in pop culture, these swords are often depicted as Middle Eastern blades. The closest thing we have in the Middle East is a Turkish killage, but it's not nearly as broad as the blades that we see, and it doesn't have this giant swell towards the back. But in fact, the closest equivalent that we have is a European sword, a falchion, which is odd because usually when people make a sword like this, they're trying to make it look Middle Eastern and they're trying to make it look exotic. But in fact, you're just making it look like a European blade. Why is this sword the go-to? Well, it kind of has to do with a game of artistic telephone. Artists in the Middle Ages in Europe sometimes had to draw things that they couldn't see. This would lead to a lot of hilarious results, especially if we're taking a look at them trying to depict animals that they have never seen before. This happened with animals. It also happened with weapons and armor and depictions of battles of people in places that they hadn't seen. So when you get a bunch of medieval artists that are attempting to depict the Crusades and they are told that the people that the Europeans were fighting had curved cutting blades, the first equivalent that they go to is something akin to a falchion. And we see this everywhere in depictions of the Crusades. We see that the people of the Middle East are wielding falchions in a lot of these depictions. Over time, this sort of turns into a game of telephone where, you know, someone's doing their research for a TV show and they run across this image and they think, oh, these are the kinds of swords that people were using back then. Not taking into account the fact that this is not, in fact, the actual swords that were being used. This is just the closest equivalent that the artist could drum up in their mind. And so instead of getting something like this, we get something like this. So in summary, there are really two problems with scimitars. One is the word itself. There are much better words that we can use. We can call this sword by what it actually is, which is a shamshir. But second is the fact that a lot of scimitars aren't actually scimitars. This is very evident by the fact that if you were to ask someone who did use the term scimitar, what kind of scimitar is that? Because scimitar, even if used, is a broad term. If you said, what kind of scimitar is that? the person is going to have a lot of difficulty telling you what kind because 
that isn't a kind of scimitar. So the term is both overbroad and a little bit inaccurate, and also kind of confusing, because a lot of things that are called scimitars aren't scimitars. In conclusion, book writers, TV show writers, video game developers, call these by what they are. This is a sham sheer. It is much better and is way less confusing.